Hello, everyone here for the Wyland Foundation Gala. A special salute to you, Wyland, to you, Steve, to all of you who are here to join in a celebration of the blue planet. Blue, it's the water. It's about the water, you know? It's that what it keeps us alive. And of course, it's more than just water. It's water plus life. That's what sets Earth apart. And it, what sets the Wyland Foundation apart is a sense of caring, a sense of merging art and science, liberally laced with a lot of kids, including Wyland himself. <laughs> That's a compliment, Why? That you have that sense of wonder that comes naturally to kids and you've never lost it. And it shows in how the Wyland Foundation has grown over the years. And now is this phenomenal presence on the planet celebrating water, fresh water that starts in the sky, really, well, starts in the ocean, goes up into the sky, comes down rivers, lakes, streams, groundwater, and then into the ocean where most of Earth's water actually is. It's also where most of life on Earth actually is. Of course, we know that now. We haven't always known that. There are a lot of things that we haven't known, could not know until right about now. Certainly in your lifetime, Wyland, Steve, all of you listening, even if you're 10 years old, there are things that we now know that we did not know and maybe could not know even 10 years ago. That's a great thing about being human, that we are the beneficiaries of so much that has been learned over so long a period of time. We don't have to start from scratch in the 21st century, figuring out, well, <laughs> how to get to the moon. Somebody's already done that. And we can build on that. We can build on language. We can build on numbers. We can build on knowledge. But now, literally, for the first time in all of human history, we're beginning to get enough information to see ourselves in perspective and to realize that we human beings are changing the nature of the earth, changing the nature of the water through what we're putting into it, through what we're taking out of it, through not understanding until right about now how important water is to everything else that we care about, including life itself. So, I really salute the Wyland Foundation, all of you who are engaged in helping to support the concept of learning about water, learning about life in the water, learning about how we are connected to everything else, and how we have this magnified significance right now in the 21st century because of what we know, because of what we're doing. We now know what to do to address issues such as the depletion of life in the ocean, the addition of these huge quantities of plastic materials that just don't go away and are causing real problems for life in the ocean and therefore real problems back to us. The toxic materials we put into the sky, that we put into the sea, that we put into ourselves. Now we know. The good news is, now we know. Imagine if we didn't know. That would be a problem. The biggest problem we face right now is complacency. Taking for granted that we can breathe. Taking for granted that water will magically fall out of the sky. Taking for granted that there will always be fish in the sea and whales and all the other creatures that are here now. But depending on what we do, or what we fail to do, those things that we now take for granted may not be so going forward 
in the not too distant future, taking, taking our climate for granted. We are changing the nature of nature through our actions. Complacency is a big problem. And the Wyland Foundation is looking at a solution, big solutions. It's called education. It's called knowing. It's called getting the word that is now out there. It's known, but getting it into the hearts and minds of people, especially the kids who are receptive to knowing and caring and have that sense of wonder, a sense of joy about life itself. One of the reasons, maybe the principal reason that I love being associated with the Wyland Foundation and the, the organization that I started, Mission Blue, that, that we have an alliance, is because of the focus that we have on kids, the focus we have on communities, the focus on getting to people and to get them to recognize their individual power, whatever it is. Now, I look at Wyland, who has exceptional power as an artist. I, I try to imagine what goes on in his mind to be able to take what he sees up here, an image of a whale, and he can magnify it on the whole wall or in a painting this big or this big, whatever it is, he can, he can translate that vision into something tangible or a sculpture. And more than that, with words, he is an exceptional communicator. Well, what is your talent? You, whoever you are. Steve Creech has a great talent on his own. He touches people and gets them on board in a way that we really need right now. But you should look in the mirror yourself and figure out what is it that I can do? What, can, what am I good at or what could I be good at? And then be the best at it that you can be. But it's not good enough just to be good at something and to love it and care about it, but then to use that talent to make the world a better place. That's what also is a signature of the Wyland Foundation Wyland's personal signature. It is to use what he's got to make the world a better place. If everyone did something like that with whatever talent you've got, whether it's in music or art, science, being a good mom, being a good kid, being a good organizer, whatever it is, some people really have a way with math. Use that talent. Some people, ha. Huh, can see what others do not. Everyone has something special about them. There are no two of us alike, and that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't know how many Wylands the world could, could uh, absorb. There's so much energy there. <laughs> I like to think of a, a Wyland clone. Just think of all the things you could do, Wyland. One of you could be diving all the time. Another of you could be painting all the time. Another of you, if you could clone yourself, could be out just being with the kids. Whatever it is, there is fortunately one of you, and you look around, there's one of everybody else, each of those individuals gifted with something that makes them special. And coming together with all of the talents that we all have one way or the other, focused on the singular thing. How do we make peace with a planet? How can what we do make a difference to make tomorrow better than today or yesterday? Armed with knowledge and armed with the power that all of us have to see where we've come from and to realize that we are experiencing on a planetary scale the natural systems that are in trouble. The ocean is in trouble. And knowing we have the power to do something about it, to go from decline to recovery, and then finding that place for ourselves 
within the natural systems that keep us alive. The current pandemic has been a wake-up call. The laws of nature are calling. We are not really in charge here. We have a magnified impact because of who we are, the harnessing of technology that we have created and developed. But we are still subject to the laws of nature. And learning that that is so, and that figuring out how do we find a place for ourselves using the miraculous technologies that we've developed to really work to re restore and heal the damage that we've caused. We can do this. We know what to do. And it's just a matter now of pulling together to do it, to make it so. One thing that the pandemic has really driven home to all of us is we're in this together. It doesn't matter who you are, how tall you are, what color you are, what part of the world you're from, how old you are, how young you are. You're just, to the little virus, you're just home. You're, you're just a host. And anything that we can do to recognize that and to figure out how we can behave ourselves to be ready for the next one, because there will be other pandemics. There certainly will be other diseases. This is not the first. It won't be the last. This is a wake-up call. And to see the world respond to a kind of recovery as we pull back from the way we have been, what, putting noise into the sky, noise into the water, the, the, the way that by just giving nature a bit of a break, we can see just in the past year, the past six months, a change in behavior in animals in the sea, animals on the land. The air is clearer when we stop moving around quite so much, burning fossil fuels quite so much. We can see the cause and effect. It's, a, it's something, if you want to put it this way, it's, it's the positive outcome of a very negative pandemic that we are able to see ourselves with new eyes. So armed with this knowledge, armed with this point in history, when we know that what we either choose to do now or what we fail to do going forward will determine the fate of our species going forward to give us a better chance, a healthier planet, healthier people, or to choose a pathway that will lead to increasing trouble. I'm addressing an audience. I'm backed up by Steve, by Weiland, by the Weiland Foundation. Look, there's reason for hope. To have a network of hope spots, protected areas in the sea, on the land, protect the skies, the water, protect ourselves. We have a chance to do this. Thank you, Weiland Foundation. Thank you, Weiland. Thank you, all of you who are listening, who are participating in this celebration. We can do this. We must do this. To do what we can on our watch to make the world a better, safer place for life in the sea, life on the land, of course, including humans. I like being a human. I hope you do too.